If you've been watching along since the beginning of this minivan series, thanks. If you haven't, be sure and check out the other episodes in this series. In this video, I'm gonna be taking a deep dive into pricing and comparisons for the main minivans on sale in the US right now. Let's just dive right into the numbers. Obviously, the cheapest minivan in America right now is gonna be the Chrysler Voyager at $27,860. The Voyager is not quite, but kind of sort of the pre-refresh Chrysler Pacifica, but with a few tweaks on the outside. So it's not exactly the previous model, but definitely is in that vein. It doesn't get all of the same kind of content that we find in the Pacifica. It doesn't get all the same kind of standard features, functions, etc. And very little options are available in that particular model. Keep that in mind. The most expensive minivan starting in this segment is going to be the other end in the Chrysler lineup, the Chrysler Pacifica plug-in hybrid. But keep in mind that that particular model can qualify people for a federal tax credit. A little bit more on that later. The Kia Carnival is right in the middle at $30. $2,100. But more important than just base pricing here is how much it will cost to get key features in each minivan. Let's start out by talking about features that I think a lot of shoppers are going to be interested in, especially in a family-focused vehicle like this. Features like autonomous emergency braking to make sure that you don't rear-end the car in front of you, blind spot monitoring to make sure you don't sideswipe anybody, rear cross-traffic detection, Parking sensors in the back. Remember that minivans are pretty big. They're pretty square. It's really easy to start bopping things in the rear. And I have noticed that when you take a look out in mall parking lots across the country, minivans that have rear parking sensors in addition to parking cameras, because backup cameras are now standard across the line here, but parking sensors help increase the safety because a lot of people, when they're backing up and they're just flustered or busy or whatever, they don't necessarily look down there at the backup camera. They think they've got it. They back up and that extra audible information definitely keeps them from bopping things. I challenge you to walk through a mall parking lot one day, look and see how many cars out there have some bumper rash on the back and how many have bumper rash and parking sensors. That number is relatively low. And then of course, radar adaptive cruise control, because that is a feature that I absolutely love for long car trips. First up, we have the Chrysler Voyager, $28,755, about $1,000 over the base price gets you most of the gadgets that I just talked about, except for adaptive cruise control. Next up, we have the Pacifica itself, $35,820 gets you all of that because that is standard on the Pacifica. That is actually its base price. The Carnival, $32,100 comes with standard autonomous emergency braking, $37,600 is where you find adaptive cruise control. Things are a little bit different with Toyota Sienna because Toyota has decided to make adaptive cruise control standard across their entire lineup. So the base price gets you adaptive cruise control, but you don't get parking sensors for some reason in that base price. You have to get up to $39,750 to get all of the gadgets and gizmos that I've talked about here. The Honda Odyssey is perhaps the trickiest here because 32,090 gets you adaptive cruise control, but you don't get blind spot monitoring in that model or parking sensors. If you want blind spot monitoring, that's 35,490. If you want blind spot monitoring and parking sensors, you won't find that up until almost the very top end trim, $42,800. Another commonly asked for feature are seats that are easier to wipe. So pleather or real leather. In the Voyager, you're gonna be out of luck because it comes only with cloth seats. If you get the fleet version, if you're a rental car company, you can get one with an imitation leather product, but rest of us at a dealer, it's only gonna be cloth. The Pacifica has no pleather option. You simply have to step up into leather, the two ring L, 39,120. That is the second least expensive vehicle in the segment to get leather upholstery. The Pacifica Hybrid at 49,920 is the most expensive. The Sienna and the Carnival come in pretty in evenly spaced there at 46,700, 46,100, but they also offer an imitation leather option. And that's really gonna be handy for people that simply want a surface that's easier to clean up. The Sienna for 39,750 in the XLE trim and the Carnival 37,600 will give you that pleather option. The Carnival is going to be the least expensive with that easy to wipe seat surface. The Odyssey offers no pleather functionality, but leather is one of the least expensive at 38,760. Next up, we have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a feature that I think really ought to be standard on every new vehicle, but for some reason is in fact not. Uh, it's standard actually in everything except for the Honda Odyssey in this segment. So you'll have to pay $35,490 for the Odyssey if you want that particular feature. One thing that you'll really notice is that due to its age, the Odyssey has a lot of features optional in the lineup that you might assume should be standard or are standard in the competition. 
Be sure and let me know what you think about that feature down there in the comments section below. One comment just casually here is that rear seat entertainment systems are not huge on my list because I always recommend that people just spend the money on other devices. So rather than getting the screen integrated into the vehicle, I would suggest go buying a cheap Amazon Fire tablet or if you want to go fancy, get an iPad, etc. You can get a 10 inch tablet for a hundred bucks out there right now. You can download your own content. You could use the vehicle's Wi-Fi hotspot, a cell phone Wi-Fi hotspot if you don't want to spend the money on a car that can do that. That's going to be a lot easier and a lot more personalized than the screens that are just integrated into the vehicle. And if you have kids that are too small to really hold a tablet or you just don't trust them, you can always strap them to the seat back using a lot of holders out there. As far as the best rear seat entertainment systems go, I would say that the one in the Chrysler Pacifica or in the new Kia Carnival, those are the best, but I wouldn't spend my money on any of the ones in this segment. Let me know what you think about that down there as well. Instead, let's move on to individual pros and cons per vehicle. So let's first dive into the Chrysler Voyager, which again started at $27,860. Again, this is basically a tweaked Pacifica, except that you can't get all the things that you might want in the Pacifica in the Voyager. Also keep in mind that the Voyager and the Pacifica have pretty decent discounts on them. Chrysler sells the most minivans total when you combine Pacifica and Voyager together. And so it's easy to see why they have so many variations, why there's so many options and why there are some pretty aggressive deals going as well. So as you take a look at these price tags, keep in mind that you're gonna get a bigger discount on the Voyager and the Pacifica than especially the Sienna or the Odyssey over there at the Honda and Toyota dealers. Now on the pro side, we have that very low sticker price, lots of standard equipment, except for adaptive cruise control. We have the stow and go second row seats, which I think are super, super handy. Also keep in mind, these second row seats are the only ones that will allow you to leave a child seat, a forward facing child seat, latch anchored into position and still tilt and slide them forward to get into the third row. That is really handy if you're the kind of family that uses that third row frequently and you have kids in child seats. Now it will only work as long as they're within the weight limits for the latch anchor, but for a lot of folks, that is going to be an absolute lifesaver. Now on the downside, the second row seats are not as comfortable as some of the second row seats in other minivans, but they do fold flat into the floor. And personally, I think that I would be willing to sacrifice a little bit of comfort for that improved functionality. We also have one of the most comfortable third rows in this segment. When you take a look at headroom figures, it doesn't tell the entire story. The Pacifica has a square third row area and based on the way that headroom is measured, it doesn't always accurately indicate how people will fit in the third row. The Pacifica and the Voyager have a little bit less combined leg room than some of the competition, but third row room is absolutely excellent. Now on the con side, we have limited options. If you want to buy the extra options, you're gonna to have to get the Pacifica. Generally, reliability is going to be lower than the Sienna, but reliability has actually been substantially equal to the Honda Odyssey. Remember that until the Odyssey got a refresh with the new 10-speed automatic transmission, the Pacifica and the Voyager and the Odyssey actually use the exact same nine-speed automatic. Now that said, the automatic transmission in the Chrysler's has received a reasonable refresh, so it's definitely smoother than it has been before. Now let's dive into the Odyssey. At $32,090, the Odyssey is feeling a little bit on the old side, and I think it shows based on the way the interior is put together and just the way the options are lined up in the option packages. The Odyssey has now gone for a very short 2021 model year onto 2022 because the Honda Vac has been discontinued. That was a really handy feature. Unfortunately, a supplier problem caused Honda to have to discontinue that option. On the pro side for the Odyssey, we have the only minivan in this segment to give us eight seats in the top trims. So if you're looking for bells and whistles and you want a seat eight, you have one option and that's gonna be the Honda. The 10 speed automatic transmission is absolutely excellent as well. And we get pretty good fuel economy thanks to the cylinder deactivation system in the Odyssey's V6. On the con side, I honestly think the Magic Slide second row seat is a bit silly because the way that the seat modules fit in the vehicle is awkward. The seats are heavy, they're a little bit difficult to take out, and then once you've taken them out, you still have that large and bulky tray that moves the seat around in the floor. And if you're taking the seats out to put cargo in the middle, that's kind of a bummer. It also means that there's something for people to trip in if you need to get into the third row when that second row seat is out, etc. I just don't find that particular feature terribly handy. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are optional, which strikes me odd. The blind spot and parking sensors, those are all fairly expensive options in the Odyssey as well. And blind spot and parking sensors are two options that I think are absolutely essential in a vehicle that's this large. Next up, we have the Kia Carnival, the newest entry in this segment, and the one that's trying to be 
the least minivan-like, I guess you could say. Honestly, I think that's a little bit silly that Kia is trying to claim this is something other than a minivan, but hey, that's their marketing department. I'll let them do what they want. They've definitely tried to style it a bit like a large SUV, but it's not really fooling anybody. It really is a minivan. Now on the downside, that style choice has meant reduced practicality on the inside. There just aren't as many good nicks and crannies and cubbies and places to store your knickknacks in the front as you'll find, especially in the Toyota Sienna. On the other hand, it's well-priced. There are a ton of premium options and the cargo area is absolutely enormous. You will fit more bags in the Carnival than any of the other options. So if the bulk of your mission is to seat six or seven and a lot of cargo area in the back, that's gonna be the Carnival. This really is the only minivan in America that can accommodate six passengers and six passengers worth of long weekend away luggage in the cargo area. Definitely keep that in mind. Moving on to the Sienna, 34,460 is where it starts. We have the standard hybrid system. So if you're looking for the most fuel efficient entry in this segment, that is certainly going to be the Sienna. We also have available all wheel drive and a very thoughtful interior design. The Sienna is also the only minivan in this segment that will let you have the combination of eight passengers and any form of all wheel drive, but you should know that is only the base trims of the Sienna. So if you want the upper end trims, eight passengers and all wheel drive not available. E all wheel drive because it adds a bit of weight also kind of fiddles with the option packages that you'll see on the upper end trims of the Sienna. So definitely keep that in mind. Make sure and balance out the features that you're interested in. On the con side, it does get expensive. Its all-wheel drive system is not going to be as capable as the all-wheel drive system that we find in the Pacifica. Because of the hybrid system, performance is certainly going to lag behind every other minivan in this segment. It is far and away the slowest minivan. The compensation for that is the excellent fuel economy, the likely high reliability of the Toyota hybrid system, and I also think the practicality of the Sienna. Even though the cargo area is not as big as the rest of the minivan competition, it was the only one where I had to help close the cargo area. You get the eight seats, you get e all wheel drive available, high fuel economy, and a ton of places to store all of your knickknacks. I like the interior design and some of the competition better, but if you're simply looking for a minivan that does minivan things incredibly well, the Sienna does incredibly well with that. Next up, we have the Pacifica and the Pacifica Hybrid. The important thing to know about the Pacifica Hybrid is that they've aligned the product lineup between the regular Pacifica and the Hybrid more closely now. They both get the same revised exterior and interior. And the Pacifica Hybrid could qualify for federal tax credits, but there's a caveat here, and it is an important one. You have to have at least a $7,500 minimum federal tax liability to get the maximum tax benefit. If you have a lot of child credits, if you have a lot of other credits, mortgage credits, et cetera, you may not be paying $7,500 in federal taxes, and that's gonna reduce the amount of, of benefit that that tax credit will give you. Certainly keep that in mind. Be sure and ask a tax professional how that will apply to your particular tax situation. You should also know you can't carry it over from year to year. And in a family vehicle like this, this is much more of a consideration than a wealthy person buying a plug-in hybrid where they've got a lot of tax liability, so it's absolutely no question. The Pacifica has a pretty fresh interior, and the redesign brought the latest Uconnect 5 infotainment system. That's a system that I've been living with for a while in the Dodge Durango that I happen to own at the moment. It's a really slick system. The high-resolution screen is excellent. There have been a few little bugs here and there in Uconnect 5, but progressive software updates seem to be fixing most of those little software glitches. They're nothing critical. It's just a sort of minor annoyance here and there. On the pro side, the plug-in hybrid system is one of the most powerful systems in this segment. It gives us pretty good zero to 60 acceleration and excellent fuel economy. Also, 30 miles of EV range is really nice. The second row stow and go is a feature that you'll find in the regular Pacifica, even with all wheel drive in that model, but you won't find in the plug-in hybrid because that's where the battery goes. We have that big roomy third row and the only true mechanical all wheel drive system available in the minivan segment. If you're really worried about winter traction in your minivan, the Pacifica is probably gonna be the option for you. On the con side, the MSRP is higher than some of the others because of the standard feature content. Although keep in mind, discounts are gonna be more aggressive, but we're simply talking MSRP here. The other problem, no all wheel drive with eight seats. That strikes me odd, but it likely has to do with the curb weight of the vehicle with the all wheel drive system on board. Also no hybrid and eight seats. So if you want an eight seat Pacifica, it's going to be regular front wheel drive only. If you want all wheel drive, you have to delete that one. If you want the hybrid system, you have to delete that one as well. 
Now, you might have noticed that I'm not talking about the Metris much in this video. That's because the Mercedes Metris is not only quite a bit more expensive than the average competitor here, it's also not really an overly passenger-focused minivan. There's a primarily a cargo version. There is a passenger version available. It's the highest sticker price in the segment. It comes with just over 200 horsepower from a two-liter four-cylinder engine, rear-wheel drive only, five, seven, or eight seats, and an interior and an exterior that is just not in line with the rest of the competition. If you want features like blind spot monitoring, power seats, power doors, body colored bumpers, which are optional in the Metris for its high sticker price, you're gonna end up over $40,000. And it's always going to be more expensive to maintain and keep around than the bulk of the American minivan competition. Now it's time to bottom line the minivans in America. What are my top picks here? Well, I have to say I have three of them. I have the Pacifica Hybrid, specifically the hybrid, not the all wheel drive model or the regular model, the Sienna Hybrid and the Kia Carnival. All three of these minivans have specific customers in mind. If you're looking for ultra reliable, high efficiency, especially in level interstate travel, that's gonna be the Sienna. A lot of practicality baked into it. If you're looking for big cargo, the ability to carry family goods, long distances, go for that road trip away with a ton of baggage in the back, that's gonna be the Kia Carnival. If you're looking for plug-in convenience, that's going to be the Pacifica Hybrid. I love the fact that you could drive the Pacifica thousands of miles without ever having filled the gas tank. And that is the ultimate in practicality for me and the ultimate in convenience. That's something that a lot of folks and family members that I know really should consider when they take a look at their next minivan purchase. The ability to possibly go thousands of miles without ever filling your minivan is a big deal with the Pacifica Hybrid. Fuel economy is also really good and the interior is very practical and comfortable. Let me know what you think about all that down there in the comment section below. What would you pick if you were shopping in this segment right now? Find me over at facebook.com. Find me over at the merch store at aoamerch.com and I'll see all of you later.